this week on Dude Stuff. All right, guys, welcome to, I believe it's part three of the world's fastest electric mountain bike. For those that haven't actually watched this series yet, I'm trying to take a pretty generic, cheap hardtail mountain bike without any frame modifications or any major fabrication or modifications and make it the fastest electric only powered on flat ground electric mountain bike not motorbike so we end up buying a voodoo banter in the end because it's the only it's one of very few frames that has a quick release skewer wide enough to accommodate the 5000 watt motor that we put in the back since then I've stuck some ferro fluid and cooling cooling fins on the back wheel I've upgraded the handlebars and stem to Renfrew fat bar and Renfrew stem. We've converted it to a single speed with a chain tensioner, just simplicity. With the amount of power this has got, you're definitely not going to need pedals. We've upgraded the tyres to semi-slick tyres. I'm trying to think what other bits we've done, but basically today, or in this video, going to be upgrading the brakes, the big brakes. Now, thanks to a company called Uber Bikes. They have kindly sent some upgraded bigger discs. Now, I didn't want to go all out and buy really expensive, massive brakes. The brakes on there are pretty decent. They're Clark's Clout. But what we're doing today is we're using their post-mount adapters and bigger discs to upgrade the size of the discs to get awesome stopping power for a really reasonable price. This is something that you can do on your any of the bikes you've got, e-bikes, normal mounted bikes. It's a fairly simple upgrade. Yeah, it's a little bit more complicated on this because I'm about to show you. The rear disc brake on this particular bike, because it's such an unusual setup with a huge 5000 watt motor, I've got a space of disc out away from the electric hub motor, so that makes it a little, little bit trickier than usual, but the, um, the gist of it's still the same. So I'm gonna take you in and show you what, we, what we've got. Right, first off, 220 mil front brake rotor. The standard brakes on this is 180 mil up front and 160 on the back, which is quite common on most entry level bikes. 220 is going to give us a lot better stopping power and just overall efficiency without costing the bank. If you look on the Uber bike website, I'll put the link in the description. These are really reasonable. I'm pretty certain they do discs up to about 240 mil. I might be wrong, 220 or 240 mil. Also, I'm pretty sure they do them in two mil thickness because I think the standard brake discs are normally, is it 1.6 or 1.8? With the thicker discs, it, it obviously is less prone to bending. It probably is more efficient at dealing with heat, etc. So we've got a huge size rotor upgrade that you can do to any bike. I'll show you how it's done today on this video. On the rear, where we've got the 160 mil, which is pretty small, we've got a 180 mil Uber bike disc upgrade. Also, Uber bikes do their own line as well as brake rotors or brake discs, whatever you want to call them. They do a pretty extensive range of brake pads. So these ones were recommended as e-bike specific. They should be a nice standard upgrade on the uh, Brake discs, um, also from Uberbike, this is the thing that makes it possible to upgrade, is they do these post mount adapters, and you can get them in various colours, let's take one out so you can see it, obviously I've gone with one that's, I've got like, orange accents on this bike, so, So they do various ones depending on the type you've got. There's different styles of post-mount adapters. If you're not sure about it, just ask, shoot them an email. They're pretty good at responding. And finally, for the back, for the brake discs, this was something I found myself that I have to do on this particular bike because of the 5,000 watt motor, is I've got some anodized disc spacers. I'm gonna measure the gap with a vernier and use the appropriate. I've got four different size adapters and just put together whatever I need. Not sure if I ordered the longer bolts because I needed longer bolts with them. I have to check on that. I think I've got them somewhere, but uh, yeah. So that's the plan today. Big break upgrade before getting onto the final stage of getting this world's fastest bike running. We need good brakes, right? And I didn't want to like break the bank just on a, a city project bike. All of this really didn't cost me a lot of money, so yeah, just get to fit in it. All right, it's so the next day now because. 
I've ordered longer bolts because I'm using a disc, disc spacers on the back. I need longer than standard bolts. So, the, so how I did that is I measured the thread from the end of the thread up to the beginning of the bolt head on the standard bolts and then I calculated, which I'll show you in a bit, the extra spacers required and I just added that on and found you know, the appropriate, I think it was M6 or M5 bolts for this uh, setup on the back. And I bought some and I've lost them so I couldn't be bothered to look for them. I spent about half hour looking for them so I just ordered another set which are going to turn up any minute. So I'm going to just crack on with the front and hope that the bolts turn up shortly. Just buzzing the bolts off of these disc that come with a bike. Similar to most mountain bikes this is a 180 unless you've got something more high end then you're more likely to have a 160 or 180 mil front disc brake rotor. Right 180 mil standard front disc off the front and without spending an absolute fortune got this sick uber bike um, front rotor so let me just put these together so you can see the size difference between the standard and the 220. That is quite a substantial difference. Yeah, that's going to be awesome. So let's get that fitted. That's nice and simple, just four bolts. Make sure you install it with the writing on the disc facing outwards. These bolts that come with the uh, Uberbyte discs have got lock thread already installed on them. All looks like high quality stainless steel, so I'm going to be using them. Right, so I've taken the two bolts off to remove the caliper off of this post mount. Now I'm going to replace that with this post mount adapter which is going to push it further away from the disc because we've got a bigger diameter disc. As you can see the mount that's come off has got the disc size on it, 180. That's the old one we're taking out. And then we are going to be fitting this on here. See that's got a 220 on there, that's for the 220 mil disc. That orange anodise actually does look really good, looks way better. So that will just mount back like before, but the position's gone slightly upwards. So obviously the height of the disc we should have the clearance now. Now just before I do that I need to change the brake pads. I'm just going to take this pin out that locks the pads in place. Right, I'm just taking out this pin with a small Allen key. Locks the old pads in place. There we go. And now I'm just going to push through from the back and release the pads. Out with the old and in with the new. And then we're just going to simply slot this back in here. Grab your pin. And that is done. Brand new pads. So now we can bolt this back on. It's such an easy upgrade this. So keep it loose and you've got a little bit of movement to help you get the wheel back in for the first time. You can put the wheel on first and then the uh, caliper after if you prefer. When you go and tighten these bolts up, it's a good idea to squeeze the front brake with the bolts a little bit loose so there's some movement side to side in the caliper as that's got now. If you find it hard to squeeze the brake in and do it up at the same time, you can put your foot on the 
lever upside down or you can get a cable tie and cable tie the lever off. Um, I should be able to access that with my foot from the other side. Alright, so the brake's on. My foot's resting on the brake. I'm just going to nick them up. There we go. How sick does that new caliper look? And the post mount adapter, even that looks really nice. Seriously, how easy was that? Like anyone with a fast bike or a high powered e-bike should definitely do this upgrade really quick. The prices are really cheap. Check out Uber bike. Excuse the noise in the background. I'm currently doing testing for a product review on a robotic lawnmower and it's crashing around behind me into railway sleepers. Right, so this is the issue we've got. That caliper is sitting on the disc, but look how far away it is from the frame. I don't know if you can see that. I can get my whole finger inside there. I'm going to take you in for a closer look. So this is the issue we've got. The caliper is on the disc and that is the gap. I can get my fingertip easily in that hole. So I need to space out this disc enough to fill that gap pretty much. There's going to be a bit of wiggle room in the caliper, but that is pretty big for a gap. That's showing almost 12 mil. This could be an issue because I don't know how much room we've got before it hits this washer. It's probably about the same. It's probably going to take the disc out to almost over this metal part. But all we can do is try. So I'm going to go for about 11, 12 mil. So these are the little spacers that I've got. And we're going to measure and stack up the ones we want before I take the back wheel off. So it's all ready to fit. You're not going to have to do this on the majority of normal mountain bike wheels. Even a 2000 watt e-bike wheel. But this being a 5000 watt wheel is a bit of an exception. So we're looking for about 11, 12 mil. And I've got these various ones which total 15 mil. So let's take one of them out. 11.93. That might be what we have to go with. In fact, I'm just going to go with them. Put the other ones to the side. That is a thickness that we're spacing out this back disc. So I'm going to put them down in a stack and uh, get this back wheel off. This is a bit extreme having to uh, space it out that far, but we'll see if it works. So that's the, uh, look at that for a difference, that's the 203 Uber bike rotor disc, as you can see substantially, substantially bigger than the 160, that's just feeble and pathetic so we're going to try and fit that to their post mount adapter and also we're going to try going in with these orange anodized spacers. This is giving us 11.9 mil with my calculations. And these are the secondary bolts because I lost the first ones. They'll turn up somewhere eventually. So that's the uh, standard size you get. And I've added 40 mil onto that to give me this length. This should be the correct size if I've done my calculations right to upgrade the uh, spacing. I'm going to fit this right inside up feed through these massive plugs. How much better does this look already? This rotor is literally the size of a 5000 watt motor. Fits a bike way better. How much better does that look? Now that looks like a substantial world record breaking e-bike wheel. I just love the fact that it's pretty much the diameter of the actual motor now. You can see the gap with the orange anodized disc spacers and now I've achieved that hopefully correct gap for the caliper. Now comes the non-fun part of trying to get it back in the frame of the bike. Right, it's all on. It is too close to the frame now, so I even need to space the wheel, which I don't really want to stretch the dropouts more, but what I think I'm going to do, there's enough side-to-side -side movement to remove one of those orange anodized spacers, and then it is going to work. That, that should work absolutely fine. Unfortunately, that's all I've got time to do because I've got to go and teach a jiu-jitsu class now. I've also bought this, so when I do the next episode of this, when I'm going to be starting the electronics and finally getting to the exciting stuff, um, 
I don't know whether this is going to help, but I've got like a cheap steering dampener, steering stabiliser. I can't see it doing anything bad, it's only going to help at high speed. I don't like the idea of a wheel wobble or tank slapper going at the speeds I envisage this bike doing. But yeah, that is all I've got time for today. I will show you the wheel and brake like working with a clearance on the next video. I will fit this steering dampener before the next video, sort out the spacing on the back wheel when I've got more time. And we're going to begin on the electric, so don't forget to subscribe and hit the notifications for the uh, future videos of the world's fastest mountain bike. I'll see you guys in the video soon.